Um, I now want to move on to discuss, however, why earned value answers these things much better than um, traditional methods. The first one I've alluded to already is the certainty of program position. Um, it's all very well for me to say that, uh, and uh, to a certain extent I have to rely on, on our experience and the, 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 uh, the practice of having done this to, 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 to say that we have proof from those 200 projects that earned value does give you a reliable position of the project. It also gives you the ability to make early warnings and gives visibility. Um, and again, the, uh, the, the, uh, the experience of having done earned value makes you realise how true these forecasts are, and very often counterintuitive as well. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where, you, you know, once you've done it, you start, you start to believe in, in the techniques. Of course, the earlier we see problems, uh, instinctively it's got to be uh, easier and cheaper to correct problems, get the project back on course. Uh, the other side of thing, life is to look at the forecasts, which again tend to be very accurate, tend to always look very pessimistic. Uh, in my experience, the times when earned value has been less than accurate, it, less than accurate it's tended to be uh, uh, optimistic. In fact, I can't think of an example where it's been pessimistic. Um, we have some examples of some quite harrowing examples of projects that were supposedly nearing completion and earned value, saying they were going to overrun for a following, uh, a following on for another six months. Um, nobody on the project team ever believes it's going to be that bad. This is, if you like, the natural optimism of project managers, which uh, is is a, is a useful thing and very important for motivating uh, those around them. Um, so, whilst a degree of optimism is important, it, one mustn't be disillusioned about where the project is really heading. The next one is perhaps slightly controversial in that it gives insights into the project for the non-participants. Is this a good thing or not? Perhaps if you're a project manager on a project that's not going well, sometimes the interference is not welcome. Um, but seriously, if we, so long as we've got nothing to hide, um, we should be open to this sort of scrutiny. After all, what a senior management there, but for to, to help us when we've got problems. An example of the insight is this graph here. Now, it's uh, not necessarily, I'm not quite sure how easy it is to read, but the point really is that this is not looking at the overall project in the same way that the theoretical examples I were giving were. This is looking at a fairly small section of the project and trying to analyse the individual problems. And one of the things it illustrates down at the bottom is the actual number of people we had on the project. And it does some sums and takes the productivity and calculates the number that we actually need now to finish on time. In this case, it's quite a startling doubling of the numbers. Now, the question for the project manager is, yes, we can finish it on time if we double the numbers. Um, do we need to? Do we want to? Can we? Is it possible to bring that uh, amount of resource in for the, for the remaining duration? But nonetheless, it has suggested that as a corrective action. The project manager now has to decide, has to decide what to do with that situation. One thing I haven't um, touched on in too much detail is the structures that earned value requires, and I don't propose to do that, but it does require a reasonable quality schedule. It requires structures around that schedule, work breakdown structures and the like, and it requires that that plan be resourced. It demands proper cost collection, and it demands regular progress updates. Now, all of these things are good project management, standard project management practices, so in theory, nothing new. Um, but it, the, the rigour of earned value does mean that we have to make sure that these things are in place. And finally, there can be some team working inefficiencies because we don't have alternate ways of measuring costs and measuring time. A couple of pieces of evidence from a business perspective about how projects perform. Uh, in the days of Taylor Woodrow, we measured the um, uptake of our processes and then ultimately the quality that we were... Um, uh, or, the, or the quality of the implementation of uh, the processes. And this graph compares the quality of the uh, standard of project control with profitability. And I think, think it speaks volumes for the relation between good project control and profitability. Um, that's not to say that all projects with good project controls necessarily make money. Some of them don't, although the reverse is very rarely true. I also talked earlier on about um, turnover, cash flow and the like. This slide um, shows the early and late curves, the early and late planned curves on a project, value of about 
30, 35 million pounds. And one can see that there's a gap um, between the early and late performance of this project of about 11.5 million, a third, of its, uh, a third of its value, in fact. Now, from a project point of view, that means it can be an 11.5 million pounds uh, behind progress. Uh, behind behind time in it, what it's spending, but still finish on time. So, from a project point of view, the the answer might be, well, what are we worrying about if we're that far we were that far behind? But of course, from of course, from a business point of view, that's trying to collect cash and is trying to achieve turnover forecasts, it's a very big problem indeed. Um, and I can tell you that businesses um, don't base their forecasts on that blue dotted line. They're much more likely to be basing their forecasts on the earliest possible completion. So that gap is quite critical from a business point of view. So hopefully I've had a stab at answering these fundamental questions and I'll move on swiftly before anyone disagrees. So in conclusion, I have skipped through this subject very quickly um, and not very delved very deeply into how earned value should be run. I hope I've inspired you to believe that earned value is something that's simple and, and you can grab hold of it in your minds and also that it's something worth considering for major projects. I think it's actually an essential tool for major projects. I touched on uh, the use of software and the use of um, consultants. Um, I don't believe either are necessary, uh, but it does depend on your circumstances. Our approach was to um, roll out um, our approach using an internal resource, which was myself. Uh, we didn't purchase any extra software. We developed an Excel spreadsheet that could run earned value for us. Uh, there was no extra resource deployed on projects, certainly. So the only additional cost really was my time spent at the centre and I can assure you that was uh, minuscule compared to the size of the business. Perhaps more minuscule than I would have liked but there we go. I'm not here today however to claim that earned value is the silver bullet that cures all project woes. It's not. Holistic project management does that. But earned value gives the project manager an unprecedented tool uh, and level of control that will aid project delivery if it's used properly. And above all It'll be, I catch up with myself, a catalyst for action. Thank you. Okay, thank you.